Peace family, welcome to another episode of Underground Railroad Productions. This is your host, Brother Rich. Got the pleasure of having the pills back together. Yeah. And we only got one mic today, so I don't want to hear no complaints in the comment section. One mic. <laughs> but uh, check it out, man. On to a more serious note, we got a situation going on in Houston. Uh, Red Pill's daughter is down there in Houston. Yeah. So I know he's especially concerned about what's going on in Houston. And um, the family, just at, at times like this, the family likes to hear, loves to hear from brothers who put themselves on the front line and brothers who are out there teaching to the people. So, um, you know, just to start out, I don't have a question to start out with, but could you just give me your general take on what you see and what you hear uh, going on in Houston? And, Red, you personally know people down there. Is, is there things that the media might not be reporting that you may hear from just talking to people down well, in that area. Let's off the break. Let's be inclusive of. You also got Beaumont, Texas. You got Port Arthur. You got Corpus Christi. Um, you have Galveston. You know what I'm saying? There's a lot of surrounding areas that are being impacted, including Houston. Houston is getting the primary coverage because it's the fourth largest metropolis. Um, but all of the surrounding areas as well are getting pummeled. Um, Louisiana is getting pummeled. You know what I'm saying? They have flooding in Mississippi. You know, that entire Gulf region, the entire Gulf region is inundated with floodwaters. So we need to send our prayers to that entire region. Um, Houston, of course, being a catalyst because it has the majority of the focus on it right now. And um, it is historically a heavily melanated city. Irregardless of what you're seeing on CNN, you dig? Regardless, regardless. my bad. Yeah, 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 yeah. Regardless. <laughs> regardless of what you're seeing on CNN, it's a heavy melanated city. Uh, we have family there. We have uh, good friends, good relationships. You know what I'm saying? And we're very concerned about the people down there. Um, I don't even need to reiterate what I've been hearing from the front line. In regards to people telling me that our folk are not being dealt with the the you know the the best service you know what I'm saying the boats is not picking our people up you know Red said something earlier about you know the 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 you know melanated bodies are being put on buses and what have you I think that when I was looking at the the total for the um the tally for the the shelters there's only sixteen thousand people spread amongst these shelters you know if it's the fourth largest metropolis in the country we're talking yeah we're talking numbers in the millions where are these people at you know what i mean so yeah please touch on it um you know you have residents from louisiana some surrounding states in texas you know surrounding cities in texas that have been you know according to, if we're talking about white inferiority or KKK or neo-Nazi hate groups some of their largest numbers are coming out of these states you know you got these Europeans boating through cities rescuing people putting them on buses and um, our people need to be very aware of where these buses are going you know our people need to be on top of this we know what happened in Katrina exactly 12 years ago to the date that Harvey hit. I think everybody knows. That's the problem. Well, exactly. Because of the lack of information, because of the fact that mainstream media continues to keep our people in a very, um, you know, uninformed state, they don't know some of the atrocities that took place or the multiple uh, I would say thousands of missing persons that have still not been found in these regions that came up missing during Katrina. We understand that the Red Cross or people that are affiliated with the Red Cross, some of the atrocities that took place in Haiti and other places where tragedy stuck, struck and organ harvesting the um, you know some of the com some of the uh, acquisitions of organ harvesting, sex trafficking, human trafficking that have taken place in regions where travesty and tragedy has struck. Shout out to the family in Sierra Leone. 
All right. Shout out to the family uh, in out there in India, where, right. huh? Indonesia, India. You yeah. know the places that are experiencing monsoon season. There are. Uh, um, it's an irregular weather pattern in all of these areas where what they would consider normal, a normal monsoon season, you know, this is a mutated monsoon season. So there's millions of displaced people. There's thousands of people that are dead. They said there's thousands of people dead in Sierra Leone, you know, due to the mudslides. All of this is being exasperated and impacted by the solar eclipse energy. You know what I'm saying? This Neptunian energy is ravishing these waters. There have been clear and concise reports coming out of Houston about the, the, the people on the boats not picking up live bodies, but picking up dead bodies first out of the water. You know what I'm saying? So why is there an attempt to salvage dead bodies out of the water before there's an attempt to salvage people that are in need? You know, and they're telling you that the body count is at 11 and 12 <laughs> and things of that nature. You know, not to make fun of mockery of it. I'm just saying. These are the games that these people play just two weeks ago. They was on your TV telling you exactly how they felt about you. So you think just because CNN put the music on and they tell you it's a humanitarian effort and the neighbors are sticking together. You feel me? All of a sudden, right? Right? So, I mean, you could put the press on Joel Osteen online, but if you don't know who the rest of these people are, you know what I'm saying? How you putting the press on them? Okay? And there's not only, you know, there's an infrastructural problem dealing with Houston. The fact that it's a cement bowl. The fact that they were going under so much construction to prepare that city for expansion. You know, they, they strip it away the coast and they covered all of the, uh, the, the, the soil that would be seeping in that water and they made it a concrete bowl. So you're dealing with a situation where... Now this water's sitting there. The water's still coming. The water's sitting there. There's nowhere for the water to go. They're pulling dams. They said they pulled the dam and destroyed 50 subdivisions to save eight. Who you think saved and lived in the eight? So, I mean, like Blue said, a huge conversation has to take place. Has to take place about disaster preparedness. If our black population, black colored, perp, whatever, whatever you want ident to identify yourself as, if the Negroes of America do not take Houston as a telltale sign of what the future has to offer and not have any kind of contingency plans or not. Yeah. No, finish what you're saying. Then let me, um, or not have any kind of concerted group efforts to help save both the babies, the elderly, the women and the men and the children, then God damn it, we just sit in ducks because, you know, the Houston thing is, is tragic. But, um, you know, shout out to my brother Talik. Shout out to all of the people, Bum B. Pop Darby, Pop Darby. Um, Raspy Raw. Yeah. Uh, there's a few other people that we need to shout out, you know what I'm saying, that are on the grounds getting it in. And that's where your help is going to come from. That's going to be the heroes in this tragedy is the common folk. You know what I'm saying? The regular people, ten toes on the ground, it's always them. Stop looking to the government. There is a conflict of interest at hand here. When the boy said, make America first, he's talking corporation talk. He's talking politics, and he's talking corporation talk. So in, in order for him to identify the freakish nature of these catastrophes, he would have to be willing to dabble into climate change. He would have to be willing to look into the things that are exasperating these weather conditions and he can't he already took the paris deal off the table he already has all of the deals with all of the oil people all of the oil barons and everything in texas the stripping the coast so he can't for the life of him put his foot in the water you know what i'm saying metaphorically speaking he has to turn a blind eye and brush this off so yeah, this is this is a, a, a crazy predicament. Put a post up early, I, I, and and it wasn't in jest. You know what I'm saying? Some people took it the wrong way, and I said, you know, you know what's more important than candy painting Cadillacs? Mm -hmm. Boats. Back.
If you are living in a low-lying area that's hurricane prone, where the boats? You know what I'm saying? For what you buying for candy painted caddy sitting on chrome, right? Tipping on four fours. God damn it. You could get you two or three boats. The situations like this. We were supposed to learn from these situations in crisis. There's always a lesson that's being taught. And you have to learn from that, right? What are the contingency plans just in case? So we've heard a lot about, you know, people are, keep mentioning the eclipse in reference to um, what just happened and what's going on around the world. And the impression amongst the spiritual community was that the eclipse was a great event, something you, you should view, something you should meditate to, uh, something that you should be happy about. It's, it's, it's a change of an old system to a new system. But if this eclipse is causing so many people to be displaced, so many people to, to, to die, is it really something that we should uh, look at as something good that's causing so much catastrophe all over the world? Can catastrophe be looked at as something good when you, when you see it like this? feel good people, okay? Uh, what have we done to receive and deserve all of the feel goodness that we expect to receive every time we got our hands out? Change is catastrophic. You know what I'm saying? Abrupt change, all right? So if spiritualists are saying this was the event that ushers in the Aquarian age, well, God damn it, you should be expecting some water and a whole lot of it at some point or some place. You know what I'm saying? Again, the key is to be prepared at all times so you don't get caught in these conflict zones and end up saying, why me? You end up in the why me pens. We cannot continue to put our people in the why me pens, all right? For people that you say have no connection to the planet, that don't want to be here, that the sun is against them, you know what I'm saying? That they can't, the animals is attacking them. They super prepared. They survivalists. They doing everything they can to hold on to this globe, whether it's round or flat. They want to be here. Okay? And we're showing the universe every chance that we get that we won and done. We won and done. We don't have no 100-year contingency plans. We don't have no 500-year business, 500 business plan layout. Okay? People come around talking about generational wealth, and they say, that's bougie. Okay, so we have to align our priorities with wanting to survive any cataclysm that may strike, all right? Because the spiritual people are supposed to know change is going to shake things up. It has been foretold time and time again. It's not a peaceful ushering of new paradigms. It's going to be tumultuous, all right? It's going to be displacing. You keep cursing this place, forgetting that you live here. What is your plan to ride this thing out? All right? You keep telling me about Babylon burning. Well, God damn it. Do you have flame-resistant suits? Huh? You got a fire extinguisher? Huh? So we owe it to ourselves and we owe it to our people, especially the spiritual, quote-unquote, conscious community, that you have to be prepared at all times because this is when it makes all of the difference. This is when it makes all of the difference. Yeah, unfortunately, spirituality, right, has been superimposed with this meekness that these meek people think that they're supposed to inherit the earth under meek conditions, the meek millies of the world. Not realizing, like Blue said, the change is too muchless, right? Huh? Tumultuous. Tumultuous. You understand? And when they spoke about the eclipse, for all of my movie buffs out there, if you watch Apocalypto, if you watch American Gods, the season finale with Ishtar, what took place but an eclipse? Right? A blood, yeah, we, but it was a solar eclipse. Because she made, they made the daytime go dark when they were celebrating Easton and everything died. Remember? In American Gods? No, so, was, they, they did the Easter solar eclipse, but in the beginning, when she was doing her part in Kemet, it was the blood moon. The blood yeah, moon. yeah, yeah, yeah. So Facts. They so they give you both. And we're going to get about, we're going to talk about Matt Sweeney 
and my other guy, the Irishman versus the African American, right? inside of American God, Shadow Moon, because he was not from Africa, he's an American, like Mayweather claimed America. But we'll talk about that at another time. You saw the eclipse, so you understand after an eclipse, if anybody was watching any of those YouTube videos that they were putting out, in, in the beginning of Into Deep, when I opened it up and I showed that the biblical, the Bible thumpers were saying that the eclipse was a biblical event, what comes after an eclipse? Floods. Catastrophe. These people who are the Bible into be on end point, time man. prophecy, these people who are into end time prophecy, they need their floods. They need everything to go according to plan, right? You got these people going out there saying, hop this, hop that. I looked at a formation of Harvey throughout when it was going, when it was traveling through the Caribbean, and it was basically in spurts. It was not the, tr it, it didn't, it did not form the way the typical hurricanes form. It didn't show that pattern. It actually formed into a superstorm directly off the coast of Texas. It looks like a hawk situation. Right? It looks like it can be, it, it can it can qualify as something that could be hot. We need to do further research into what's taking place. We got Valent, uh, Dr. Reverend Valentine has some information about Russian um, weather weaponry that may have been utilized. But again, that's another episode. You understand? So we know when it comes to Texas, we're talking big oil. We know when we're dealing with that Gulf region right there where the hurricane actually struck, all of these oil rigs and things of that nature, you know, we know a lot of things go into play. But what I would want to say is, like Blue was saying, our people, man, these peaceful, compassionate, flower, children, tree-hugging individuals who only want their feel-good moment, so you got it on Saturday with the guy, with the TKO. You got your feel good moment in Vegas, baby. And directly after that, you got your moment of realization that in your celebration, in your bottle popping, in your turning up to Bodak Yellow, you're gonna have to deal with real life. And that's these catastrophes. That's uh, elderly and women and baby and children and all, it's houses underwater. Okay, it's a city being destroyed before your eyes. All right, there's no come. I mean, like, look at look 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 at Katrina. Look at Louisiana after the flood, B. So you know the possible situation that we're looking at in Houston. And if you're listening to this, if you have family in Houston, have them get out of Houston. Okay, ASAP. Get out of Dodge because. That water is contaminated, all right? The sewage and the mold and everything has already contaminated that water. So there's going to be a disease situation that's going to be unprecedented because that water cannot go anywhere. It's in, a, it's, it's in a cement bowl like Katrina was, you know what I'm saying? They're opening dams and, and bopping levees and doing this, that, and the other. They're talking about a 10 to 20 year rebuild plan. They don't have the construction necessary on the ground because the Mexicans is terrified about immigration, okay? So unless Jamal and them is willing to come, you know what I'm saying, out the trap, out the bando, all right, and get in contaminated water, right? You did Sandy clean up. Can you talk about how crazy that is, dealing with that mold? We were going into school buildings for Superstorm Sandy. I, had, I was on a cleanup detail. Right. It was like two days, yeah. Rain. Super Superstorm Stanley rain for Superstorm. how many days? One day. It just came through and it, it, it tore up in New York. Yeah. And we couldn't go into schools. We couldn't go into certain project buildings. Not just we had the face mask. We had full, uh, uh, full rubber suits on and everything. But the fact that the mold was so deadly... When the water subsided, this little black mole on the walls, they was like, yo, all of this can kill you. 
I can't even get into Texas right now because where my daughter is at, she's safe. Family is safe. But I can't even fly in to get her out because I can't even pass through 45, which is the highway. Even the back roads are flooded in certain areas. So like Blue was saying, I was even thinking about, well, shit, I could go and chase a check and do some cleanup for about eight years out there. But I don't even think that I would expose my lungs to what's, like he said, what's going on with that mold. I won't even expose my lungs to all of that, all of that, all of that. You know what I mean? Like the, the Gulf was already questionable because of what we was taking place in Fukushima and other places. BP. So they, they're sharing, you know, the posts on Facebook and Instagram about the cleanup. So people are going to run and get the bag. Okay. Family from Houston is going to go to Georgia and other places already contaminated and contaminate that community. People is going to go into Houston to clean up. They're going to get contaminated and go back and contaminate their communities. You know what I'm saying? So it's going to be this, this disease that's going to be spread. All right. What are they saying? Game of Thrones. Winter's coming. You feel me? This is not a very cool predicament. And then they have a nuclear reactor that was built below sea level that they're saying might erupt or blow at any second. So the radiation in the water. Where, in Texas? Houston. In Houston. Oh. Wow. Huh? I didn't know that. Bruh, there's a lot of situations. Like I said, the oil refineries is already all in the water. All in the water. Yeah, the, water. The, water. the water is water. super contaminated already. The sewage is contaminating the water already. You all right? Everything else is going on. Like I was watching um, CNN this morning, and and uh, 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 a brother a brother was talking about how you know his house had blown up. He had a gas leak, and his house blew up. He said his father had a truck in the back that had 30 gallons of gasoline. So the house blew up. Then the shit caught, then it caught on. To the to the car, blew the oh, truck yeah. up. So all of that, all, you know what I mean? It's, it's mad stuff in the water. I seen pictures on FB that they had sharks in the water. I don't know. Oh, then they were saying, yeah. Then they, they got a gator park out there where the dudes was like, yo, the water's almost at capacity. We can't hold it back no more. The gator's about to be released in the water. You know what I'm saying? Uh -huh. There's going to be more release for pets than it is for people. These I ain't got to tell you that. You already know what time that is. Okay, the pet relief is all crazy. Fox and all of hmm? Look at this stranded dog and cat. Huh? So, stranded cat. once again, you know, we want to salute the celebrities that have got in front of certain situations and, and you know, have, have garnered um, a relief effort. I don't know if that money's going to the Red Cross. I don't know how they do their philanthropy and their donations. You know what I mean? I mean, Kevin um, Telling them to send it to the Red Cross. I'm like, how the hell does the Red Cross earn our trust? Not after Haiti, not after Katrina, after everything. That's how they set up, though. Huh? That's how they set up. Look, he getting, he getting, go he getting, fund me. He's getting recommendations from his accountant, of course, and from his people. And they're telling him, go with a reputable organization because, of course, I'm sure there's some write offs and everything dealing with that. So they're going to go to the Red Cross. You know what I'm saying? That's what they're going to do. All right? But we have to develop these alternative contingency plans where we're able to respond as a community, as a people, do our fundraising, and get what's needed to the people where they are at. You know, all right? And they are reputable people that are doing that in real time. All right? So on Instagram, you might want to check out Raspy Rawls. Um, you want to check out my dude Pop under 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 um underscore. underscore Darby, all right? He's on Instagram. Um, Bum B is doing things. You know what I'm saying? There's another young lady who I, I see in her video. She was up in the convention centers handing out, you know, stuff. Um, Shout out to Talik. To my dude Talik Haru. He's doing things. You know. Y'all might want to go holler at Joe Osteen. His church is open. Who church is Joe? Nobody even know. Yeah, that's crazy, the hood. I got, I got one more question for y'all. <clears throat> they had the meme floating around all over social media. Um, I think Blue Pill posted it. T -T. Saying that, you know, Katrina, 
829.05, Gustav, 829.08, Isaac, 829.2012, Harvey, 829.2017. Uh, I know Blue's into numbers a lot. He deals with the, uh, hold up, he deals with the, the whole 44. Yeah, it's too yeah. blurry. I'm going to have to, uh, yeah, they're not going to be able to see that. Can you see it? Yeah, but, um. Oh, in, in Blue's post, he was talking about the metrics, saying that he sees a 3-4-5 pattern emerging. Um, you know, just dealing with numbers, Blue, could you elaborate a little bit on this post that you uh, put on Instagram? Yes, um, and his post was uh, our brother, Dr. Reverend Phil Valentine, added on to this particular post. So he gave us some more dates. You know what I'm saying? To wrap our mind around. Um, yeah. Yeah, so some of the dates that you touched on were um, confined to the continental United States. We have 529-2017. Okay, this is in, in Russia. All right. We have Berlin, 629-2017. And we have Paris, which was on... 7-9-2017. We ain't got the 29 exactly. And all of those dates are not necessarily landfall dates because people was trying to connect, correct me in my post, of course. But these are when these particular situations were hitting their critical degree because 29 in astrology represents critical degree. You know what I'm saying? The eclipse hit on the 29th and the critical, and the critical degree uh, I mean, hit on the 21st, but it was in the critical degree of Leo. It was his last day of Leo was, was the critical degree. Um, so I made reference to a book that A.A. Rashi wrote at the time of Katrina, the metaphysical uh, yeah, breakdown of Katrina. And, you know, speaking about the number 29, it's the atomic number for copper. And copper is... In the mineral kingdom, we would be considered copper. It's the mineral that's more closely associated to the melanin person, you know, but it deals with the energy of Venus, of Virgo. Um, you know, its color is green. Uh, you know, celebrities that might be most associated with it at this particular present day and time that we know of, you know, because Mike is not here, so we might say Beyonce, all right? She represents that Oshun energy. Has been identified in the video. She was underwater. Facts. And All right. New Orleans car. Yeah. No. Was no. It, it was video. a Houston police car. And they was in a flood in Houston around that time of the video. So she was forecasting. Well, she, you know, metaphysically is that connection. Dealing with the Super Bowl that they had in 2012 at the Superdome. Dealing with Kaepernick energy. And the fact that she's from Houston but represents that New Orleans energy. Whole nother subject, whole nother breakdown, 444 decoded. We're going to get into that. But, you know, when we are looking at um, this whole aspect of copper and the number 29 is dealing with women, is dealing with melanated women in particular and the suffrage that they've received on this planet. And, um, you know, we always want to believe, especially when they say that these events are God-made events and, you know... Um, events of biblical proportion you know well what is nature and or the natures what exactly are they trying to say to us what is the communication you know what i'm saying if the woman represents that whole aspect of her connection to the moon and bodies of water when we see flooding when we see drenching when we see downpour when we see torrential downpour you know we should always want to look and see what the state and condition of our women are you know what i'm saying are they in distress you feel me are they being um, prepared and, and taken care? A lot of women were in distress about the way that we championed around Mayweather and cheered for him. You know what I'm saying? And they said, yeah, nobody points out the fact that this guy is a woman builder, beater, just walked away with another $300 million, put him in a billion dollar boys club. You know what I'm saying? For the use of his, his hands, which should be licensed, that he freely, according to, you know, the alleged accusations, puts on women. So the more that our women don't feel safe in society, you know what I'm saying, the more that they're endangered, going through what we went through in Charlottesville, you know, and the level of fear that I saw in our sister's eyes based on the fact that they're like, well, what's going to happen now? and Who's going to protect us? You know, 
And just the, 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 the global aspect of how she is in distress, period, about the things that are taking place, you know what I'm saying, and the conditions that face her and men's unwillingness to protect her against all odds, you know, we're, we're, we're going to see conditions that are very unfavorable to a populace of people that are unwilling to protect the women and the children of that population because they represent the future. So, again, if there's a mandate on this planet to erase, right, to shake the earth off of things that no longer serve the earth any purpose, a people that's a one and done people have no place here. And I don't want to put it like that because I don't want people to get into their feelings. And I'm not saying everybody that's a part of a tragedy is, um, you know, is stigmatized or, or targeted as someone who the universe is canceling out. I'm just saying the universe is acting up. Mother Nature is in a fit. She's in a rage. You know what I'm saying? And she's doing things that are indicative of a serious paradigm shift. All right? And the things that we can do to be responsible as people, as responsible people, is we can cause some sort of paradigm shift amongst the women in our society. That's what 444 was about. Okay? Show contrition and apology to these women who are weeping for us, who are in pain, who are hurt, all right? You have to balance the home if you want stability in not only your home, but in society and your community. And ultimately, because of her position and a station on the planet, remember, watch the throne. Who's the throne about? The throne was about all set, Ice. all right? It's about ISIS, okay? And that's who Beyonce represented in that paradigm. You can't tell them brothers who to talk about and how they talking about it. That's how they ritualizing and symbolizing who they're putting on the throne, all right? So when she's in distress, the world is in distress. You have to bring it back into balance if we're looking to ride this thing out because you're not going to, you ain't going to stop a hurricane. You know what I'm saying? You're not going to, uh, uh, you know, correct global warming, but what we can do is we can do, you know, even if you roll in the dice and you end up hitting craps, God damn it, you're going to be better off for it you understand? If you're willing to uphold this this queen, put her back on the throne and make sure that you protect family and home. I just wanted to leave with the etymology or not necessarily the etymology. You have to read it. I'll put it on but the Harvey family name or the meaning behind the name Harvey, whenever they Name these hurricanes, you should do your due diligence. Just do the etymology on the name. Find out the meaning of the name, you know what I mean? Because names have energy, correct? You know, pigs can't. Names have, you know. So the Harvey family history, English and Scottish, Scottish. From the Britain personal name, Erelu or Hearview. Composed of the elements H A E R, high R, which is battle, carnage, and worthy, which was brought to England by Britain followers of William the Conqueror, for the most part in a Gallicized form, Harvey. So, you do the knowledge. Okay. You know, uh, leave, leave your info for the people. Contact uh, info. Know the ledge app. An iTunes store. Hold on, let me show you how it looks. Shout out to everybody that has downloaded the app for your phones. All right. KTL, Know the Ledge is how you search for it. All right. In the stores. All right. Google and iTunes. Download that to your phone. Salute to the family. All right. Anything? Yeah. Blue Pillar 44 on IG. I have a lot of posts that are going more elaborately into what we're speaking about on this channel. If anybody's lost what we're saying, again, we never look at any moment to uh, utilize any of these opportunities to throw shade or, or you know, to, to, to pounce on the head of our people. You know what I mean? This is a very distressful situation. And... You know, our overall message is that we just have to wake up. We have to be in tune with the universe. We have to be in tune with these times because 
the change is amongst us. You know what I'm saying? And it's not going to be two peas in the pause type of situation. You don't want to be where these folks is going. You know what I'm saying? And you don't want to be the folks that's going where they're supposed to be going. So don't let them trade places with you at this particular time because they on top of ritual and you not. All right? You know what I'm saying? And they be like, hey, put this hat and this name on and the universe come and they tag you instead of them. Like, you don't want to see that. You feel me? So we love our people. Um, that goes without saying. You know, like I said, we've made some reference to some of the people who are on the ground dealing with relief efforts in real time. We're going to find out more. Aton Edwards is definitely somebody that you need to look up and speak to when it comes to disaster preparedness. King Simon as well. All right. Because we have to reinstitute that right here in New York City because of Indian Point, the nuclear reactor that's right up in Westchester. All right. And there's a lot of other situations that are facing New Yorkers, you know, that we need to be very mindful of at all times. You know what I'm saying? Um, we need to have our preparation, our, our walk, you know, our kits still with us. You know, our Batman belts like Aton be wearing. You feel me? Yeah, yeah. You have to be prepared at all times for any and everything. When I was in a whole nother life, I didn't come outside without everything that I needed and prepared. Like, you know what I mean? We prepared more when we was in that other world for any and everything than we do now. We all laid back. Feeling like our eye shades is going to always carry us through. Yeah. You have to be prepared in the real world for real things. And if Houston showed you uh, anything, it basically showed you what Aton Edwards and King Simon and them were pushing about that black pack. That preparation backpack and Professor Griff. Salute to Griff and Soleil on their wedding as well. Congratulations. So the black pack is a bag that every single conscious household, in between, you know, in between the debates, in between, you know what I mean, whatever y'all doing in the crib, which, uh, you know, in between Shea Butter Sundays, we should be putting together this black pack, backpack. Salute to Tariq Nasheed. I saw him on one of his episodes. He had the $99 uh, feed. You know what I'm saying? The, the 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 whole thing with the feed and whatnot, or all right, the um, what is that? The 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 what's another name of the feed? The food, like emergency uh, meal prep type emergency of emergency meal preps. You dig what I'm saying? That hammer, all right. That protection. You dig? That 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 utility knife. You understand? That flashlight, solar powered. There's a bunch of items that go into the black pack. Go and Google it and do your research. The straw where you could drink out of soiled water, okay? The uh, life straw. You're going to need all of these things. So when that tax money comes in or, or that extra bread that y'all got that y'all throwing away and what, before you throw it on uh, pebbles and peaches, put that money to use because what I saw was when it all boils down to it, the Jordan collection, the 20s and the 30s and the 40 inches rims, the dunks, the candy painted, the Bentley Jeeps, and all of these things, the red bottom shoes, they don't float. They don't float. Means nothing when it all boils down to it. Your baby can't eat those Jordans chilling up in Joel Olstein's church. You need, yeah. You need to prioritize yourself. Get your ammunition up. Get your arms up. Because they got stories of people kicking in doors out there in Houston. Stop for law on you demons out there. Oh, you mean Jack Boys? They got them Jack Boys working. Well, the military, the army dude said, look, we got to kick in every door. Mm. It's Katrina all over again, mm -hmm. right? You mark the cribs with the red X and all of that. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> On a Passover. You feel me? They got to kick in every door. You know what I mean? And go in every crib to make sure that everyone is alive. All right? Certainly. Let's send our prayers to our family down there. I do not care what nobody say. You have no friends. 
from the top government all the way down to the parishes to the precincts they already told you what time it was all right this is a perfect opportunity for them to purge be on top of your game all right you should not be sending out Facebook messages to go get Nana. You need to find a way to go get Nana. All right? And it hurts my heart to see it takes four people to carry Nana out. All right? This feels like Katrina all over again. And in terms of biblical proportion and calamity, if God will rain a million barrels or gallons on the Bible belt, Trillion. Okay? What are you gonna do with Sodom and Gomorrah? Sure. Yeah, we're gonna do it in Atlanta. So peace to the family. Salute to the family as well that is out there for not falling into the looting mind state and all of these other we don't see a lot of that taking place. But I did hear a story about them jack boys kicking in doors, taking a lot of people's uh, valuables and things of that nature. So be safe out there. Protect yourselves. And I'm going to see the family in Houston in a few days as well when I get down there. Peace. Peace. Peace, family. This is Brother Rich from UGR. Urging all my viewers and subscribers to help support the channel by donating just $1 to the UGR PayPal account. We appreciate the viewership and support, and we understand the power of a dollar. If you benefit in any way, shape, or form, we ask that you donate a dollar, whether it be monthly, bi-monthly, quarterly, or yearly, so that we can build our brand to compete with the NBCs, the MTVs, and the Foxes of the world. I figure since Kanye can ask Mark Zuckerberg for $1 billion, I can ask my subscribers to donate one dollar so I can make the best possible content possible. The main objective of this channel is to inspire you to become the greatest version of yourself. So hopefully throughout the years of you watching this program, you have been inspired to become the greatest version of yourself. If you would like to donate, you could go to www.paypal.com and send.